I've made a whole bunch of videos for you all, but I've had to delete them. I've created a whole bunch of videos for this channel, but unfortunately while I've been editing, I've noticed an intermittent glitching that's been occurring, and it's been getting worse and worse. This is what it sounds like. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is a really simple thing, however, password feedback for when I directory who's never actually used that one before so let's see we're looking for airplanes I'm going to use in a few spaces this is actually a tab space this password is quite easy to use vault because Google does have a little you can actually host your own vault program like say VeraCrypt or anything like that so as a result I've deleted all the videos because I'm going to attempt to re-record them now up until now I've actually been using this Razer Siren X microphone and although this microphone is certainly not the top of the range when it comes to microphones it still records with fairly decent quality and the audio can be cleaned up in post production anyway so up until now I've been quite happy with this microphone until this intermittent glitching issue so I've tried all sorts of things to try to problem solve the scenario firstly I tested out different cables to see if it was a cable issue but that didn't work so next I tried changing the DAW or the digital audio workstation that I was using to record the audio so I was actually using audacity so I thought maybe it was an audacity issue so I tried updating audacity and then I tried using earlier versions of audacity but it still didn't fix the problem so then I thought I'd try different DAWs so now I'm actually recording into ocean audio so hopefully the glitching will be minimal or at least I'll be able to edit around the glitching in post-production but it's still affecting the sound quality too much and it's really annoying when I'm editing to find the glitch still exists so then I thought I'd try a different tack so I fished out this old microphone that I've had in storage and it's a lapel mic it's a stereo mic I actually used to use this to take field recordings and it's a very old Panasonic mic I actually checked out online and it came out in around 2005 2006 so the quality is not the greatest in the world and if you look at the connector it's just the old stereo plug and if I try to plug this into a mobile phone which I'm using to record the audio then it doesn't work so I actually had to pick up an adapter which actually has the three bands as you can see here so let's now test this mic and see what this sounds like in comparison to the Razer Siren X so I have this old lapel mic and as you can hear the quality isn't the greatest in the world and actually if I turn this off the audio quality that the iPhone that I'm recording these videos with actually seems to have better sound quality than this lapel mic so then I thought Brainwave, Apple earbuds have a microphone on them, so I thought I'd try that. So what we're listening to now is an Apple earbud microphone, and it is a tiny bit better than the Panasonic lapel mic, but the audio quality still isn't actually as good as the iPhone, and in my opinion, the iPhone audio is a little bit echoey because it's actually picking up the entire room sound. So in a previous career, I actually went from being a musician to studying audio engineering, which was a huge passion of mine. During that time I was an audio engineer, I was actually recording bands and doing a lot of live sound for gigs and even producing music and doing a little bit of DJing. But I thought maybe I should actually approach this from an audio engineering mindset. So I've actually got this MXL 990 microphone and this is a budget home studio microphone and I think you can pick these up for under $100 these days. Now the thing about these mics that sets them apart from the Razer Siren X is that the Razer Siren X is actually a USB mic so you just plug this directly into the back of your computer and off you go. Whereas this microphone is an XLR microphone so it actually has XLR inputs which means that you can't actually plug this directly into a computer you actually need an interface. So, I so happen to have this old Mbox One, and this unit is absolutely ancient in today's terms. It actually got released by DigiDesign in 2002. And the thing about this unit is, it was designed to be used with Windows XP, and to be able to use it, you actually had to run Pro Tools. And I think it was Pro Tools 5.3 that it started with, and I was able to use this all the way up until Pro Tools 7. Since then, there have been over 10 different versions of Pro Tools that have been released. So this unit is kind of unusable and DigiDesign who actually bought out this unit 
ended up being acquired by Avid Audio. So support for this unit was dropped many years ago and it's very difficult to find drivers that will actually allow me to use this unit. Which is such a shame because this unit has both TRS or quarter inch inputs as well as XLR inputs. And it also has phantom power or 48 volt power which is actually a requirement for use with this condenser microphone because unless you power this microphone with phantom power it actually won't pick up much sound at all. Now I did trawl the internet to see if I can find any Mbox One drivers and I found two websites. One was Zach Poff's website and on that website there's a hack that actually enables the Mbox One to be used as a standalone analog preamp but the hack involves making a cut in the circuit board and soldering a jumper wire to a chip so it's very clever but a fiddly solution. Then there's the USB audio website where I could download a driver for 49 euro which is actually way more expensive than the unit itself. You can actually find these online these days for pretty cheap. So that essentially doubles the price of this unit and you can actually pick up other external interfaces for probably cheaper than the unit and the driver cost itself. And one of the cool things about Linux is that it will actually recognize many audio interfaces simply by plugging them in. So I'm going to try plugging this into MX Linux to see if it will actually show up. Right, so here I am now in MX Linux and I have the inbox here. So first what I'll do is I'll open up the Pulse Audio Mixer. Here we go and I'll go to the input devices and hopefully simply by plugging in this unit and then connecting it to the computer, this should actually show up. And there we go, so the Mbox one is now connected. So all I have to do is select it here for it to actually start recording, but I actually don't have any microphones connected to it, but it's showing up in Pulse Audio, and if I jump over to the output devices, it's also in Pulse Audio. So I can actually monitor using this device now instead of the internal sound card of the computer, which is absolutely brilliant. So I'll close out of there for now. Cool, so I have the microphone. I have an audio interface that I can run the microphone through. The last and most important part of this equation is actually a computer. Now, because I'll actually be using this laptop to record the screen for these videos, I actually want to use a different computer to record all my audio. So I have this trusty old XPS M1330 laptop and Dell released this laptop in about 2008 I believe it was, which at the time of this recording makes this a 14 year old computer. Now in a recent video I actually installed Peppermint 10 onto this machine and Peppermint runs super well on this laptop. However, when I actually installed some audio applications onto this computer, it kind of struggled to actually run those programs. So what I actually did was I've tried out so many different operating systems to see if this laptop will actually handle the audio software that I'm going to install on it. So I tried Arch and I tried Debian and of course I tried Peppermint, I've tried Zorin, I even tried AV Linux and the latest version didn't work so I tried the previous version and even that struggled. So after much trial and error I actually found a really cool operating system that will actually run the software that I want to run on it. And that operating system is Antix Linux. So Antix 21 is the current released version and if I jump into the computer so here we are in Antix Linux and this is a fairly fresh install. I haven't done much at all to it, I've just changed the wallpaper. I've installed Simple Screen Recorder. So firstly let's check out the specs of this computer. So I'll open up Terminal and I'll run a NeoFetch. And as you can see the CPU is only an Intel Core 2 Duo running at 1.833 GHz. So 14 years ago this computer was pretty quick but in today's terms it's a fairly slow computer. Now this laptop also has three gigabytes of RAM, so it's not a huge amount of RAM that I've got to play with. It does also have an NVIDIA GeForce graphics card, but I won't be utilizing that because I wanna actually turn this kernel into a real-time kernel to minimize the latency of when I'm recording the audio. And in my experience, real-time kernels and NVIDIA graphics cards don't really play well together. 
Now, Antix 21 is actually built on Debian 11, which is a fairly recent version of Debian, so that's good. And it's also running the 5.10.57 kernel. So this kernel is actually a super stable kernel, and it's absolutely incredible that an operating system that has that under the hood uses such little RAM. So for example, I'll run HTOP, and as you can see here, this computer currently is only using 339 megabytes of RAM. Now that is absolutely phenomenal. When I was running Peppermint 10 on this machine, recording the screen with Simple Screen Recorder would actually use twice as much RAM as Antix Linux does. So that leaves a huge amount of RAM available for applications. And the other cool thing is, as you can see here, there are only 47 tasks running currently, which probably contributes to the minimal RAM usage. Cool, so I'm gonna close out of here now. And so what I'll do now is I'm gonna theme Antix Linux to suit my needs. And I'm also gonna install some applications. So I'll be able to use this Mbox and plug the MXL microphone into the computer. Cool, so I've now set up Antix Linux and it's now perfect for use as an audio workstation. So what I'm gonna do now is open up our door and yep, we have a signal coming in to our door. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna start recording into our door so that I can turn off this audio and then start using the new Antix Linux audio. So what I'll do now is I'll record enable the microphone and then start recording. So I'm now recording into our door. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the Razer Siren X microphone and then switch to the MXL 990. So let's do that now. Cool, so now we're listening to the MXL microphone. So if I jump into my other workspace, this is the setup that I'm running, and as you can see, Simple Screen Recorder is in here. I have Pulse Audio Jack as the server. So I'm using Jack for my audio, and that way I have minimal latency. So if I were to put on my headset and then turn on my monitoring, now because I'm running the kernel in real time, the latency or the delay between when the microphone picks up my voice and the headset actually plays it back for me, is very very minimal so for example if i jump back into workspace one and then i open up cadence as you can see the latency is only 5.3 milliseconds so a very short i'll turn that down now a very short latency cool so that's incredible i'm really pleased i was able to get this all to work so right now, this 14-year-old computer with only three gigabytes of RAM and a dual-core 1.83 gigahertz processor is able to handle Pulse Audio, QJack Control, Cadence, Ardor, and Simple Screen Recorder all at the same time. So let's see how much RAM we're actually using right now. So I'll open up my HTOP and check that out, it's absolutely incredible. It's under 800 megabytes of RAM, so that is truly phenomenal. So I'm actually gonna hear for the first time when I do the editing of this video, what this MXL 990 condenser microphone sounds like. And hopefully there's no crackling or anything like that. And as you may have noticed, I've actually been reaching down here because I've actually built a little shelf underneath my desk because this laptop because it's being pushed pretty hard actually does have a bit of fan noise but it's nothing too major and once I pop this computer under the desk then that virtually eliminates the sound completely cool so so now I've replaced this microphone here now if this all works out well I'll actually create another video on how I set all this up it's a little bit complicated in Antix Linux, but I'm sure if I were to do the same in MX Linux, then it'd probably be a little bit easier and less time consuming. And now that I've solved the audio conundrum, I'll be able to create some more videos for you.
So until the next video, I'll bid thee a farewell for now.